sir. Praise the Lord, church. Turning your attention to the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 6. I'm going to read this as our opening verse. Great to see everyone out today. The Lord bless you richly. Um, <clears throat> we need the preaching of the word. It may not always be obvious to us, and uh, but somehow the Lord is shaping us. He's molding our lives. He's helping us with our reasoning skills, our developing our right thinking. Amen. And uh, the Word of God is able to do. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. Amen. It's a discerner of the very thought and intent of the heart. Amen. And I'm thankful for the Word of God today. It's able to do a work in this place right now today in your life and mine. Amen. You have to trust that the Lord knows exactly how to give us the medicine we need. I don't mean a, a rebuke. I mean an encouragement. I mean a word that will go with us on our job this week and strengthen us with our trials and crisis that we face. Amen. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 6. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. My simple text is that very verse. Why are you looking for living among the dead in your life today? Lord, I pray that you would anoint the word. Thank you for the word of God today. I pray that, Lord Jesus, you would bless every heart, every life today. Oh, God, that this thing is bigger than we are. This thing is great, oh, God. Lord, I pray that you would allow us to see clearly today, to understand and perceive, Lord, what the word of God would say to us. Bless, we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. If you're going to celebrate the living... You will never find it among the dead. That is a biblical truth that is consistent throughout the Word of God. When that prophet, that great prophet who had all those miracles, he died and they lowered him into a grave that was already occupied. When the living came among the dead, the only answer God could do was to raise up the dead. <laughs> because that's the way it is. When the Lord brought Mary and Martha to the sepulcher of Lazarus that day, before he said, loose him and let him go, the Bible said that Lazarus was on his way out of the tomb because you don't ever see the living among the dead. After he came out hobbling on, on one stump foot, you know, uh, all tied up, then he could say, loose him and let him go. You have to understand that this is a biblical truth today. This is something that's more than just the obvious or the physical. God wants us to realize today, never look for living things among dead things. As the women went to the sepulcher that day, it was, of course, Mary Magdalene and Joanna and the mother of James and other women that were with them, probably to mourn the passing of a Savior, one they esteemed so highly. But instead, as they entered into the sepulcher, they found two men, the Bible says, that they thought they were men, and, and the Bible tells us that they were angels. And there in shining garments, and their message to those who were 
loved the Lord, those who cared about the Lord, those who would follow him. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Why is it that you would ever think that he would still be here? What could possibly be in your mind that you think that everything stays the same around us even though we have something living in us? Oh no, my friend. When the living comes forth, the dead has to go. This is a lesson that we're to learn today in our Christian life, our experience today in 2023. That we will never find the dead among the living. We will never go and look for something that has life among dead things. If you want something alive today in your walk with God, you're going to have to go someplace other than where all the dead things are. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 says this, And unto the angel of, of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain, and are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Now you have to take a moment to think about this. The Lord speaking to the church at Sardis said, you, you've got a message. You've got an apostolic message that the Lord is great and, and we're the worshipers of the one true living God and our God is one. You've got a message of what the Word of God says, and you're preaching and you're speaking that in the city of Sardis, in the church of Sardis. But, but at the same time, you're dead. How can that be? How can there be a message of life with dead people? And so the angel of the Lord spoke to them and said, what you need to do is, is shape it up. Take that which is dying and make it alive again. How do we do that? There's got to be something more to this than what meets the eye. The angel spoke about the church of Sardis. <clears throat> These men said, wow, how great God is. These men said, oh, this message is alive. These men said, oh, the Savior is here. But when the angel of God, the, the man of God, comes and speaks to the church at Sardis, he said, he said, you never got it. You, you are the dead preaching and trying to preach a living message. Why? And the angel spoke to him and said, why do you look for the living among the dead. Just because man puts a title on something, oh, that's really alive, that's really, that's really on fire, doesn't mean that God puts the same label on it. Herein is where we need to be a part of the church that's alive and on fire for God, as opposed to simply someone who says, I read my Bible, and I know where to put judgment where it belongs. <laughs> you might say, well, Brother Erickson, how do, I, how do I know the difference? I mean, tell me more. And we'd have to go to the Scripture. Let's go to Ephesians today. <clears throat> In chapter number 2. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 3, and I think maybe we have this on the screen. Look what the Bible says here about death. And you hath he quickened. Quickened means made alive, correct? You hath he quickened who were dead. How are we dead? In trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world 
according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. How? In the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We need to define what's dead and what's alive in our life today. The dead always follows the course of this world. Never the steps of faith. The dead's conversations are always full of lust and covetousness. The dead's desires of the flesh and the mind will always be fulfilled in the vessel. Contrary to what God wants, for he wants us to come out from amongst them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. The dead will always walk in trespasses and sins. It's not a matter of shall all this flesh have its, have its uh, times and it fails. Absolutely all flesh sins. But we're talking about a, a process of wanting it. We're talking about a, a process of saying, I'll go to church on Sundays, but the rest of the week is mine. I'll live for God sometimes, but sometimes I'm going to take care of KV himself. I know what I want. I know what I like. I know what I deserve. That's what the message to Sardis was. You bunch of heathen, you may have a talk, a good talk, but you're not living it. You're not obeying this thing. You're not, you're not realizing today that if you're alive, you're going to come out of that junk. Do I make mistakes? Absolutely. Do I fail? Absolutely. Do I sin? Probably so. But we're not talking about missing the mark. We're talking about willful neglect. We're talking about doing things because my desires are more important than God's will. Oh, yeah, preaching to a church today, uh, human beings. Uh, I'm not calling anybody good or bad or ugly here. I'm just telling you that we have to realize as long as you're in this stink of flesh, your flesh can stink. As long as you uh, realize today uh, that when you leave the house of God and you forget that you're the temple of God and you go out and you start doing things because that's, I know what's best for me. I know what I enjoy. I know what's fun. You need to realize today that your message has become tainted. Something wrong with what you say on Sundays and what you're living on Wednesdays. I'm preaching today not to call people bad or, or to attack someone. I'm just trying to get you to realize today it matters how you live today for God. He wants you to realize that the power he gave you is not to go in the hospital and start laying on hands on the sick and the whole hospital is healed. No, he gave you power according to choice to say, I don't want to be that way anymore. I don't want to live. I remember what it was like laying in my bed with a room going round and round because I was so drunk. I remember having that bucket beside me so I could puke my guts out. I remember what a little pot did. I, thankfully, I wasn't into it very long, but, but I, when I was around that Votex school, I, it, was, it was there. And I remember the one few times I went out with a kid that was there in that class with me. I remember what it was like to not have any control. But something got a hold of me. Something got a hold of me. I wish I could know all the words to Brother Nelson's uh, song right now. Amen. I could read you the whole lyrics of it. But, 
But something, something got a hold of my life. Something got a hold of my desire. Something gave me enlightenment that I could see that, that while I'm doing that over there, whatever it is, uh, for every one of us have our own uh, desires. Every one of us have our own weaknesses. Every one of us have our own issues we're dealing with today. But I just want you to realize that whatever it is that you're dealing with, oh, it's a treasure chest waiting for you to dig it up and say, ah, according to the grace of God, I'm going to be what God wants me to be. And when I am, there's a victory to be won. You see, the graveyard is always in Scripture a graveyard of sin. And the Lord always calls his people out of the place of death. And that's where you have to come, you know, the rubber has to meet the road. The, the, you have to bump heads with your, with your logic and your thinking and say, what does it matter? I go to church, so what does it matter if on Tuesdays I do my own, you know, I del delve off into this area that I know isn't right, but, but I'm trying to do better on other days. You have to realize what it does. The angel of Sardis said it clearly. He said, you have a good talk that you're living, but you're dead. This, this life that we live is so available for me to be rooted in my own lusts. I could get wrapped up. It's not always sexual, though the Lord knows it can be. It could be other things. It could be uh, the world uh, that I'm trying to gain. It could be my education. It, it could be, uh, you know, who I know. It could be where I've gone. It could, it could be all sorts of things. Here's what Romans 6, 1 through 5 says. Uh, I will finish here in just a moment. Give me just a moment longer. So I'm not preaching to hurt anyone here. I am coming down on flesh here today. Realize what I'm trying to tell you is, is that you can rise above it. That no, I'm not, I'm not preaching about what you've already done wrong. I'm, I'm just here to tell you today that that is the place where God marked in your life that you can have a victory that goes beyond anything you've ever experienced in church. Amen. What shall we say then, Paul said? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. The power that God has for you in your life is a power that wants to work within you. It's a power that God wants to help you and lift you up and, and take care of these things in your life. These we all have them. Understand today, there's not one of us that is soloed out here. Every one of us have got our weaknesses. We've got our places that we shelter, where we go to, our, our hideaway, our, our, our secret place. Well, Brother Erickson, I don't go to bars. No, but, but if it's in your mind even. It's not only our physical, it's our spirit, that's our mind. You see, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, why he went through all those steps he did, because the resur resurrection exists so that we can experience our own personal resurrection. Now, I, I know that you all already know this because you were buried with him in baptism. When you got baptized in Jesus' name, you left the old man behind, did you not? But that doesn't change what you think today. 
You see, there's got to be more. There's got to be not only baptism, but there's got to be a resurrection power because something's got to save you from yourself. Something's got to deliver you beyond your hiding places, your secret places, your places of safety, those places where you can tune out. <clears throat> I was working at Marriott, and it was, it was kind of a pressure job at the hospital, and and I would, and, and and we had our boys were little, you know, little boys, and um, Elaine, out of fear, <clears throat> would allow me to come home and I'd get on my computer and play a few games of chess. Just let me settle down a little. <laughs> let me get myself back to, you know, being dad and husband and and away from all those issues I was dealing with. And I'm I'm not telling you it was right. <laughs> I'm just realizing that one day I was going to have to go past that. I couldn't always operate that way because <clears throat> that really left God out, didn't it? It means I didn't handle the issues when I was there on the job. It means I didn't face the things I needed to. I probably wasn't reaping out uh, judgment and, and, and heading people off head on and talking to them, but I was just getting mad at them and letting them go on. So I'd come home fried. I'd come home mad. Wasn't my wife's fault. Wasn't my boy's fault. But oh, I remember that little one back before he was six foot six <coughs> would climb up in my lap and I'd rock in that chair and he'd fall asleep and I'd fall asleep. <laughs> Yeah, God is so good, isn't he? We we need our we need our own personal resurrection. That and that may not be all yet in place in your life. Not because you mean to do evil, not because you are uh, dissatisfied with your walk with God. Not that you didn't have an experience in God. But God's still working in our minds. He's still working in our habits. He's still working today to make us that we are more and more ready and able to do his will. You won't find the resurrected among the dead. If we continue in sin, how is grace going to abound in our life? For we've severed off and we've been put in the graveyard of sin instead of in the lifeboat of Salvation. The graves opened. Don't you love that scripture in Matthew 23? And when he was crucified, when he said, it is finished, and the veil was rent from top to bottom, showing that no longer would there be a physical temple. No longer would men need a physical temple with curtains eight layers thick. But it was all torn from the top to bottom so that now anyone had access into the Holy of Holies. But not only that, the Bible said that that day something else happened. All of a sudden those, the redeemed in that city that day, all of a sudden came to life and came into the city. Because the dead cannot exist with the living. That physical experience is what God is promising you in the spirit today. That there is, there are steps of redemption where I'm not questioning your Acts 238 experience. I'm not questioning that you haven't had some deep, wonderful experiences in God. Please don't, mis don't misrespect misrepresent what I'm saying. But I'm saying today, you've just got to realize how important this topic is. There are no dead among the living, and there are no living among the dead. God wants today a life of victory in our lives. He wants us to be free from the bondage of sin. We just got through singing I, I hear those chains falling. What's it talking about? 
oh, different things in our life that, that have, been, uh, have been a chain to me, have been habits, have been thoughts and attitudes that were wrong, and I never applied them to the gospel and to the love of Jesus and, and to the goodness of God. And so what happened? Well, I've, I've been dealing with it on the side. And God said, I don't want you to fix it. I want to fix it for you. There's not a person so good that doesn't need God today. You know, Hebrews 6 and 1, I, we won't go there, but it just simply talks about the foundation of repentance from dead works. There it is. That's what God wants in a young man, a young lady's life. Every one of us have this challenge set before us today. One man, I guess, said that you are what you eat. We certainly are affected by our habits. We know that according to the Bible. We certainly are affected by those who we hang around. We know that's a biblical truth. And so today, today, all this is called today, give God another chance to work in your life in a new and living way. Not questioning all that God already has done. This is not a matter of good or bad in the sanctuary. I'm talking about human beings today that every one of us have and will always have a need to keep drawing closer, keep drawing closer, keep trusting him more and more. How do I trust him more and more? A little more in this area of my life and a little more in this area of my life. Amen. John 14 talks about entering into the fullness of truth. There's not more truth. There's just more truth revealed in different areas of my life. Amen. When they asked, and they said, Lord, we'll follow you, but let us take care of our fathers just passed. The message was, let the dead bury the dead. The, the reference to that is not bad. It's allowing those who are touched with the life of those who are satisfied to live a life outside of the realm of God's victory. It's time to leave the graveyard of our hearts, of our minds. Why not live for God more this year than you ever have before? If you're not making all the services, all I'm saying is, what do you know today that you missed? Well, you don't know. You have no clue what our snack chat was about. Not to mention how good that cake was. <laughs> and I don't mean that when I say you're clueless, I don't mean that you're dumb or ignorant. I'm just saying you have, you've not been exposed. How can you know what the Lord could have spoken to you today? Is it possible that the Lord would do and, and have the ability of, of speaking to us, not only in this service, but collectively with the other one? Is it possible? Yeah, it is. I never mean to preach any messages, one connected to the other, but I can't tell you how often it seems like it's similar. Don't mean to, it wasn't my intention. Jesus calls us today. It's time to follow him. It's going to require you to leave some things that, that are merely the dead of, of my flesh, of my desires, of my schedule. Schedules are not spiritual. My occupation, no offense, it's not spiritual. I believe God gives them to us. I believe they're a blessing of the Lord. Oh, God is calling you today. Why not come to prayer meeting? Try it. You may find out nobody's going to make you do anything. You, you're free to come and pray, and you can leave whenever you want. But I just know, try it, you'll like it. 
Test the waters. Prove me this day, God said, concerning tithes and offerings. Don't you think he can prove us in many other facets of our life? And so I've been meddling today. I've been talking to people that I want you, I want you to shine. I want you to be that example to a community, not better than someone else. I just want someone to realize there's a life that can be committed to God more than I ever thought was possible. And I see that in Sister Nancy's life, and I, I want that myself. Amen. Would you stand with me today? Wherefore, come out from amongst them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. And I will, you will soon be my sons and my daughters, and I will receive you and be a father unto you. Oh, those are things I want in my life. How about you? I don't even know what all that means. I know my dad, I've got the experience of my own dad, and I loved him, and I, I'm just sorry he's not here with us today. But, but I'm wondering if there's even more the Lord wants to show me about dads. And maybe I could even become a better one to my boys. Oh, there's just so much today. I wish I could share. But everything meets at the place called life and death, graveyard or living. And you can't be satisfied to live. I'm going to dabble in both, Brother Erickson. You're really not. You're really just fooling yourself. What I'm expending to you today is an opportunity to launch out further and see if God won't truly deliver you from some of these things that have been afflicting you in your life. We don't have to talk about what they are. I've got enough of my own to know my own issues. But I'll tell you what today, he's here in this place right now, today, to talk to you, to meet your need. You know, the Holy Ghost, let me tell you, just step out and let God do it. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Make sure your heart is repentant. Make sure you're asking God to forgive you of your sins. You can say, well, Brother X, I did that before. Well, you need to do it today. The Apostle Paul said, I, I, I repent every day. So it's not a one-time deal. If God wants me to have it now, he'll make me. No, no, no. He wants you to seek him. He wants you to want a better life. He wants you to trust him today. Oh, I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in this place right now. Would you just reach out to him? Would you just begin to love him right now? Oh, Lord, take us farther. Oh, Lord, separate us from all that is, Lord, sin, all that is death. Lord Jesus, let us be a people called by your name, separated unto God, a people prepared for the Father's work. Hallelujah. Oh, I invite you today to step out of your pew. Oh, find a place to pray for just a few moments. I'm inviting you today. Come on, give God a chance today to take you farther than you've ever been before. Why? Because He loves you. Because He's speaking to you today. Because He wants the best for you today. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of God in this place. Oh, I feel like the Lord is talking to us today. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. You're so close to the realm where God wants to do things and make changes. Oh, would you finally say, Lord, I don't want this old life. I don't want to fall back on my devices. I don't want to trust in my flesh. way today. Jesus, oh, take this church and catapult us into great things. 
the Holy Ghost can minister and work and move in our lives. God, you can speak to us today. I'm so thankful that rather spirit or flesh there are some things that are unmovable of scripture you could stand on them and you will be right unchanging unmoving circumstances don't change my God is the God of the living and today he's working in your life in such a beautiful way no matter what came across your mind, whether you're living a perfect life or, or you're one here today that needs to make some changes, it doesn't matter. We all need to hear the message. I need the preaching of the Word of God in my life. And watch God work in your life. Please don't cut off God when you leave this place today. Don't just say it's enough. I heard my message. Now I'm going to go back to my norm. Well, let this ponder in your heart. Think about what God, what does God want to do in your life today? I promise you, there are new heights that you never knew were possible. As you obey from the heart, God will honor that. Are we good? No, there's none good. No, not one. But obedience, obedience is such a powerful thing today. God will bless you. God bless you today. Thank you for allowing me to preach to your hearts for allowing me to say things that will challenge you. Amen. I hope that never I say a word to you that cuts you. I hope the Holy Ghost, now the Holy Ghost can cut you, but I hope it won't be Kevin Erickson in his flesh. But I want you to grow in God. I want you to have victories in your life. Let 2023 even be even better than all of our experiences we had in 2022. And I felt like we had a great year this year. I'm looking forward to our board, our business meeting because we have a lot to say. Look what the Lord has done. This has been a great year. But I, 
I do want to say, but what does God want to do this year? Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. Shake hands and be friendly. Amen. Miss someone here today, call them up. Let them know that you love them, not to reprove them. Just let them know that you care about them, thinking about them. Amen. God bless you.